Good afternoon. In this video, I want to continue on dealing with the issue of uh, the Robert Blakey issue in date setting that he claims isn't date setting. Now, go back to that video and see what he says. Somebody asked him, uh, Robert, when do you think the, the Lord's returning? And Robert Blakey says, well, even if I knew the exact date of the rapture, I wouldn't tell you. <laughs> I wouldn't tell you. So then he goes this little rigmarole about Joseph and seven good weeks and seven bad weeks and uh, whatever it was and, and uh, uh, you know seven good years excuse me seven good years and seven bad years and and uh, Pharaoh you know and, and signs and revelation what is and he he tries to say well look at vain where the word vain jangling came from and tries to say I'm misusing the term the word the word vain jangling jangling means a discordant noise you get that uh, your definition. Uh, idle babbling or vain distribution, dis, uh, disputation, disputation, and that's what it means here. This is what this whole thing is about. They're trying to tell you the whole concept is to try to get excited. The rapture's close. The rapture's close, and give you these signs and stuff. Well, the rapture's imminent. You don't get much closer than that, people. When I woke up this morning, this afternoon, I woke late last night. I, I said, the rapture could happen today. I'm not looking at 2021, like Robert Baker said. It could, be, it could be as early as 2021, he said. That's what he said. He thinks that's close. And all the dates he's setting the same thing. Look, we put 2033 and the seven years. Beyond, they try to find a second. You can't find a second advent. I'm going to find the, the literature that Ruckman talked about, where he basically said, anybody who thinks you can't find the date, you know, they just haven't figured out the calendar. They haven't figured this out. You can't figure it out, people. Because nothing in the prophecies are going to relate to the church. To time the rapture. Do you understand that? That's the principle. All these guys looking at things are looking at things that are for prophetic signs. There are no prophetic signs in the church age, the church period. The Israel being put in the land is not a, it's a prophetic sign. That's what people keep mis misusing it for. See, yeah, Israel's back on the land. It's a prophetic sign. No, it's not. Things are being put in place. Technology being developed and, and things, various things are being put in place, obviously. So when it happens, these things will be in place. Israel had to be in the land. It was Schofield note said, you know, they had to go back in the land in order for these things to happen. But that's not a prophetic sign. These things are just being put in place. There's nothing prophetically that has to happen in order to for the rapture to occur that's the big issue about first second thessalonians uh, uh three uh it's two three that's the big issue are we looking for the rapture or are we looking for the antichrist and what these guys would have you do Second Corinthians, Second Thessalonians 2 3. Let no man deceive you by any means, for that day, day of Christ, should not come, except there come a falling away first. That's the only prophetic issue to sign. And when that began, it began in uh, Paul's day. Pre tribulationists have always taught that the rapture is imminent. They have not taught the idea that you could time you could find the time of the rapture. They say it could happen any moment because everyone was anticipating it. Every generation of church believers is anticipating the rapture in their generation. If you thought, if you could look at signs, you're taking the anticipation away from that generation. Now, what's happened since Israel's been in the land, people have looked at that verse and said, this generation won't pass away until all these things happen. And then they're looking at the, the generation that saw the, the, uh, the creation of Israel. That's not what that verse is saying. This was not the way to date the rapture. So everyone's looking at, well, generations 50 years and 70 years or 100 years, you know, so. A comma, there's a comma. And that man of sin be revealed, the son of petition. Now, either we're looking for the rapture or we're looking for the, the, the Antichrist. If we're looking for the Antichrist, that's another prophetic event. That's why we look prophetic events, because it takes your eyes off the rapture. Now, what, what uh, uh, Robert Blake is saying, I'm not being charitable because I'm dealing the, uh, you know, he's, uh, I'm not charitable. Why? For exposing a heresy? A lie? See, I told you these guys don't like being criticized. 
he can't respond to anything I've said doctrinally. He cannot give me one objective standard by which he's gauging all this nonsense he's done. He just thinks it's, well, I'm just having fun, and we're just in here doing this and doing that, and, and uh, you know, we're talking about this. He's talking about nonsense. You're talking about nonsense. And looking at Revelation 12, and looking at uh, Revelation 15, and looking at this, and, well, I'm just having fun, you know, I'm looking. But it's not doctrine. It's not doctrine. So vain jangling doesn't have to be in the context of what the King James Bible is. The, the vain jangling that is talking about people with uh, are giving false uh, noise out. Emptiness. Nonsense. And that's what uh, Robert Blake is doing. He's putting out vain jangling. Any date set, anybody who about, talks about looking at telling you to look for the signs in heaven or look for the creation of Israel or look at this or look at that, is telling you something to get your eyes off the imminency of the rapture. It's just that simple. And then they want to say, you know, oh, it's not being charitable. I'm being very charitable. I'm being very charitable. The issue is, is a doctrinal issue. And these guys don't want to be exposed in that because they don't want to deal with the issue of actually dealing with doctrinal problems that they're having and actually have to refute, uh, actually defend them one-on-one. -on -one. He's free to come on my, my site. Well, he's come on. Come on, go look at my, my video on it. Where he, where he comes on and comments on it. And he makes a big deal about it. Oh, I'm not just being shallow. You know, defend the idea. He's, his old video is, I'm not date setting. He's doing the same type of date setting that Buckman did. Uh, the rapture can be at 2030. Uh, the second advent can be, will be 2033, and therefore he counts seven years back. And as Jason pointed out, we don't know the gap between when the rapture happens and that beginning of Daniel's 70th week begins. There could be a small gap in there where things have to, more things have to be rearranged before the actual, that six that seal is actually, uh, in, in, in Revelation 6 is actually broken. And, there, and the Antichrist rises up. So there could be some events in there that uh, that will you know, have to set up the Daniel 70, uh, Daniel 70th week. We don't know. There's, we don't know the time element. We're not told any time elements in Revelation. We're told events. And all these guys are looking at events and saying they can tell a time. The only thing, the time element they people can tell is that the abomination of desolation, which gives you the gives you the mid-trib period, the time of Jacob's trouble, which is the mid-trib people uh, trib period, uh, period uh, and not the beginning of Daniel 70, uh, 72, like Brian Denver people want to keep talking about. The time of Jacob's trouble. The time of Jacob's trouble is the mid-trib uh, part. That's the time of uh, Daniel's desolation, uh, uh, the desolation, uh, uh, abomination desolation is put into the temple. So these guys don't want to talk. They don't want to discuss it. You know, they want to play games with each other where they can discuss nonsense, vain jangling. That's what vain jangling is, nonsense. And that's what that, that, that verse is talking about. And these guys have swerved away in vain jangling, talking nonsense. And uh, that's what this is. Anybody tells you, Starts telling, get try to get you into looking at. Oh, look at this sign over there. Look at this, and it can be happening. You wake up you, today could be the rapture. Any moment, somebody said that. So if anybody denies that the rapture can happen any second, it's denying the imminency. That's how imminent it is. These guys are trying to you know get away with this by saying we're, we're telling you how close it is. Well, I'm telling you this is <laughs> any second. You don't get much closer than that. So. You, the, 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 the church age, the church believer believes in pre-trip rapture. Every day gets up say, this, this, is, this could be the day. This could be the day. So much else I was telling you, look up for 2021, 2023, and 2030. Baloney. And that was all a gimmick by Ruckman to put that out so they can get people to work for God. See, everybody's trying to get people to do something. You know, Christians are all afraid of doing something. So the Buckman thing was, you you only have so many years left because it's no, it's going to be, you know, certainly the rapture is going to happen by 2028, you know, 2021. So that tells you, Christian, you only got so many times, so much time left. That's that was the mindset. I'm going to find the Ruck, the Ruckman. But don't be deceived by these guys. It's all entertainment. It's all trivial. And it's it's not even it's not entertainment in the sense that it's that it's that it's harmless because it gets you for, off the idea of imminency. He hasn't he hasn't answered the issue of imminency. 
See, he doesn't believe the rapture is imminent, people. And the rapture is imminent. The rapture is imminent. It can happen any moment. He hasn't come back and said, oh, yeah, I agree. The rapture is imminent. It can happen any moment. But I'm just looking at this other stuff. No. So you've got to make a decision. The pre-tribulational historical basis has always been imminency. And then you get a guy who's intellectually arrogant, like Peter Buckman, who thinks he can find something, and then goes in there and says, the date's got to be in there. The date's got to be in there. <laughs> no, no, one's gonna, it can't, no, it's not. Because he thinks he can find, manipulate and find things and add this and add that, and, you know, and they want to play games. And they bog you down with this, you know, mathematical nonsense and, you know, you know, seven good years and seven bad years and, you know, and this guy's this and this guy. What? That's not scripture, people. Scripture is sound, solid. Cram's comparing scripture, scripture, scripture. So, but you see, you see the spirit of Robert Breaker. He wanted the, he wanted Jason to take that other video down because all that Jason was doing, I'm, he's looking at my com, my statement from the first video and laughing at some stuff I'm saying, saying what Robert Breaker was saying is nonsense. People, you know, Christians have to be sober minded. It's very easy to get off on these tangents, like the flat Earth thing. PBI put out a, a on the I get their newsletter every month, a whole article against the flat Earth issue. Um, Brian Donovan. What? Because it's a distraction. It's meaningless. It's nonsense. It's not. The Bible doesn't say anything about flat earth. But people get distracted. At it. Oh, oh, you know. Satan will find things to get you interested in things that have nothing to do with the Bible. This issue that Robert Baker and the Scott, the Scott Adams and these guys are talking about uh, is, is, is blood moons. And, you know, Revelation 12, and I saw the stars, you know, the what? <laughs> do anything. And then they say, it's not charitable. Because I'm exposing him as teaching a false doctrine. Now, most of what he teaches is solid doctrine, sound doctrine, about 90%. About 90% of what he teaches is correct. But this 10% area, faith works in the Old Testament. He's got a problem with interracial marriage, even though he tries to deny it. He's got that article still up. He won't play, take it down because it's based on Acts 17, which he avoided talking about. Thinking inter interracial marriage is bringing, uh, the, bringing the Antichrist in, you know, because you're breaking down barriers. And the issue, of course, is state said issue. Now, what's what I, I want him to be, I want him to take correction. And to reject those things, look at those things objectively. You indoctrinated with these things. You 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 correctly rejected the sinner's prayer from the Ruckman thing. You correctly did that, and he should be commended for that. But he's look at this other stuff and say, wait a minute, this is stupid. This is stupid stuff. No way is a Christian forbidden to have interracial marriage with another Christian. It has nothing to do with the Antichrist coming in. <laughs> That's nationalism versus internationalism. There's no such thing as a faith work system. Works can't do anything for your salvation, any dispensation. It's all of grace. Because God won't be in debt to anybody. Romans 4 2. <laughs> put God in debt. Yeah, you are, you know, I didn't take the mark, God. Look at that. So God says, Yeah, okay. Don't put God in debt. Can't keep you can't keep your salvation by your works. They had a ritual plan of salvation in the Old Testament. Just because you see people doing things for their reconciliation. And the and the sacrifices were also teaching things. They taught people. They would teach people. The tabernacle was for teaching. They didn't have a completed canon of scripture. You gotta keep that in mind. When you're looking at the Old Testament, they didn't have a completed canon of scripture. So what they would do, they were having things to teach people with these with these rituals and with the uh the furniture and the tabernacle and the temple and all these things they were they were teaching things that to help people uh, uh, the garments of the high priest everything was basically to make to teach people about God now we have a completed canon of scripture we don't need that stuff that's why we don't need it we have a completed canon of scripture we have the King James Bible so we don't need it we, we, but God used those things to teach people and those the animal sacrifices were illustrations, types of things, and they would learn from that. 
and they they were getting scripture, you know, progressively. They weren't getting, uh, they didn't have everything. Away. People forget this. Like, they didn't have the whole Bible. They, 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 you know, they were learning these things. And so they had a ritual plan of, rec uh, of reconciliation. And, and their personal righteousness was based on what they were doing. You know, uh, you know in, uh, in Luke, he talks about the, the parents of John the Baptist were considered righteous according to the law. Why? Because they were doing the things the Lord demanded. But that law wasn't saving them. The law showed their faith. It showed what they they went. They had to go through these rituals. We don't go through that stuff because of our intimacy with Jesus Christ, our position of union. So things have changed. But because we don't have to go through a ritual plan of of our walk, doesn't mean that that those rituals did anything to save them. Those things were to teach them and to show their obedience, to show their faith. They did these things. So I'm gonna stop here, put this up. I'm gonna go look for the most stuff. But again, this is this is what what's important about this Rob Breaker is that he's you know he won't take correction. He's another guy like just like Brian Denton. These guys won't take correction. Rob, well, step back and look at this stuff objectively. You put a you put a you put a a, 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 a video up, and the whole interview should when is Jesus coming back? And the first five minutes of that video, you tell you tell the people. Even if you knew the day of the rapture, you wouldn't tell us. So what's all this rhythm rope for? So what you're saying is even if you, even if somehow you could, did find the day of the rapture, you, you wouldn't tell us. If you knew it was the day of the rapture, you wouldn't tell us because you, you don't want to be known as the guy who knew the day of the rapture and take away from the glory of God. That's what you said. That's what you said. That's how silly you got. It. This is silly. And... A teacher of the word of God is supposed to be sober. This is not sobriety. Sobriety. This is not sober. This isn't gravity, gravitas. This is this is silly nonsense that is a distraction to the body of Christ. Because you can't find the day for the rapture. You're not told to look for a day of the rapture. You can't find the day of the second advent. We're not in that period. The Jews will have a, a, a better chance of getting around that because that's the three and a half year period. But even then they have to wait for that abomination desolation to show up. In order to know this is a three and a half period. That they're, they're looking for an event. We're looking for an event. The rapture. That's the next event we're looking for, the rapture. When that rapture happens, day and seventh week begins. The next event the Jews are, Jews are looking for is that prophetic event of Daniel, uh, the, uh, the abomination of desolation, which tells them to flee. And uh, the Antichrist is going to come sit in the temple and uh, be enthralled by Satan. So I'll stop, put this up. I right, welcome the comments. Um, the, the idea of a, a pastor and a teacher is to keep people away from idiocy. <laughs> Distraction from the Bible. This doesn't get you into scripture, people. He, he says that. There's nothing in there because all you're doing is you're linking things that aren't linked. What Joseph is talking about has nothing to do with, the, has nothing to do with day, setting day to second heaven. It's all allegorization. It's all, you know, uh, uh, imagination. That's what it is. It's an imagination that comes in and says, well, maybe I can fit this in over here. And maybe this is really, this is over here. And same thing people get in numerology. Are numbers important in scriptures? Oh, yes. God used, if God is God of numbers. You can tell the whole thing in Revelation, book seven is always showing up. There. But you can't go into too, too much into that because then you go crazy. And people have gone crazy. Well, this number means that, that means over here. Look at this number over here. These are all distractions. There's enough to learn in the scriptures by clear scripture, where you don't have to get off into this nonsense. Because there's nothing there. There's no hidden things in the Bible, people. There are deep things that we have to search out. But there are no secret codes. You know, remember the whole thing, the Bible code. Oh, God, the Bible code. And they code this and they code that. You know, <laughs> you know and everybody's got to crack the code. No, just, just continue reading the Bible. The Holy Spirit will... Constantly showing you new stuff, new stuff, and edify you. Uh, James uh, from ex Catholic Christ, he's reading through the Bible again, and things are being shown. That's the amazing part about the, the Bible, the King James Bible. Every time you read it, you see something new. <laughs> it's like, have I had you? Know, it's like, have I been here before? <laughs> what happened? That's the reality of it because you, 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 it's alive. You're, you're, you're involved with a, a living. Being you live uh, the, the God, it's it, God. God has breathed life into the King James Bible. You can find this other Bible. 
But when you go through the King James Bible constantly, you always, you, God is speaking to you directly from the King James Bible through his scriptures. The Holy Spirit's in you, illuminating it, illuminating the scriptures, opening your eyes to it. And as you're reading it, the Lord is saying, oh yeah, you remember that? Because you have to have context. And the more context you have, the more things the Holy Spirit can show you. And you say, oh yeah, yeah, I didn't see that before. Why? Because you have the context. So as you're reading through the scriptures constantly, and constantly, and of course you're supposed to put the, prefer the, uh, the uh, uh, your preference, your, your priority needs to be on the Paul's epistles. You read them constantly through because they tell you how to live at the Christian walk. And then you read the Old Testament all the while. Because they, they, they give the ammunition, they give you to uh, they give the historical structure, they give you understanding, you're learning from lessons. They see the guys in the Old Testament learning, and so you, as you, as you're going along and reading all these things, you're getting better context. The King James Bible is the most contextual book in existence. Everything's based on context, and we have these guys pulling things out. They destroy context. Everything's about context, and that means everything everything's woven together. So while we're dividing, we're also uniting. That's what these guys don't understand. They have right dividing. We, yeah, we understand right, and, and they attack right dividing. You have to divide, but you also have to show similarities and divisions. All these guys want to show us what's similar. You know, they, they're not dispensationalists. They want to show what's only thing with things that are similar. And you have to show also things that are different. And then you show, so well, oh yeah, okay, I can see that. These things are different. These are similar, and you can see how they, how they relate. That's why you have to be in the King James Bible. You have to be constantly reading in context, 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 and understand these things. And the and the and the, the 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 Bible will constantly be talking to you, showing you things. And you say that's how you know it's alive. It's the only book in existence where you can't read it too often. You can't read it too much. There's no other book in existence where you you'll read it one, two, three times, four times. And say, well, okay, yeah, I kind of, it's it. Maybe I it might be another book out there. You know, you can, people get an expert, expert in Shakespeare and various things, and they go out reading over constantly over, and they want to get know more about it. But this is a book where, you, if you read this, you read the Bible 300 times, you should, <laughs> you'd still be learning, learning stuff. You'd still be learning stuff. And I doubt anybody's ever read Shakespeare that much. I mean, basically, if we, you hear people have read, read about 100 times, 300 times, because it's a lot. You're going deeper into deeper into the mind of Christ. But he can't show you things until you have better context. And understand, oh yeah, that verse, that, that, that's that. Now I understand that. Okay, now I understand, I understand. Now I understand that. That's context. But you're in a relationship with a person. And the more you read the King James Bible, the more intimate you get with Jesus Christ. Because now you're, he, you're sh he's showing you his thinking. His thinking on these issues. That's why it's important. You can't understand anything in Scripture, uh, what the, uh, these guys are talking about, until you've been in the Bible long enough to say, wait a minute, that's, <laughs> what are you talking about? And that's what you, that's why we have a royal priesthood. It's a, it's a royal priesthood. You're a priest. You go directly to God. Teachers aren't there to, to, to decode things for you. They're to help you, guide you, and to bring things out connections that you might not have seen that's the gift and the show you say and so, but you know basically you, you understand the you stand once you see it, oh yeah 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 I, I, you know i didn't see that connection but he takes his seat he's thin skin all these guys are nickeladians and that reason how we the king james bible issue is so important we don't allow nickeladians because we have a, we have an absolute authority that tells us what God has said, and so when a teacher gets up there and he's not telling you what God is saying, you can refute him on it. Say, wait a second, how it says. And if he gets back on you, he says, wait a minute, who are you? <laughs> no, no. You have to defend it from the King James Bible. So you can't run to the, you know, in the language, well, if you just knew Greek, you know, you know. They have to defend this. I challenge Breaker to defend this. Where you can give him an objective verse that says, yeah, you can find. The second advent and find the rapture date. It's not, it's not. It's not in existence. It's not in existence. So you got to avoid all this. These are all the Bible is such a one. The King James Bible is such a wonderful, incredible miracle that people will find ways to get you involved in things that are tangible. You know, tangible. You know, the, the intangible uh, on a tangent. You know, things that 
uh, that aren't, aren't, aren't crucial to your growth. They're just basically games. You know, and they always find new new ways of doing it. Get you involved in this thing. Look at this. Look at that. Look at that. And the idea is you got you. It's, it's growth. Yeah, it's an education. Understanding, you know, who Jesus Christ is. Who you know, what the plan of God is. What you, uh, you know, growing in intimacy with Him. Uh, understanding your walk. Understanding your relationship with other people. Staying filled with the Spirit, more and more. Understanding what sin is, so you can confess your sins. That's the cru crucial issues. These other stuff is just like, you know, they, they just, you know, uh, games. And they're not that, that crucial. They're not, they're not crucial to your life. And, and a lot of things are just wrong. This thing with the date, wrong, date issues is wrong because it's denying the intimacy of the rapture. It's denying the fact that every day you wake up, say, you need to say to yourself, today could be the day of rapture. This could be my last day here. The Lord can come. That's the fact. That's the fact, because no, there's no prophecy has to happen before the rapture. And that's what Robert Baker and all these other guys are denying when they tell you to look at, well, the rapture's close. Look at this. Look at that. But we don't get much closer than it could happen any moment. So I'll stop with this up. Amen. Thank you.